Hi, today we're going to be taking a look at a new soldering iron and this is one of these portable soldering irons with a USB-C connection. The thing that differentiates this from the ones that we've looked at so far is it actually takes JBC C245 cartridges which means that this could actually perform quite well. Um, so this is an unbranded unit but it's called the L245 on AliExpress and it comes in at about £43 delivered to the UK and there's two versions, one that's black and one that's silver and this is a very bare bones package so literally all you get in the package when it arrives is the soldering iron and one of these uh, Chinese C245 style cartridges. And if we look further down at the listing we can see it's made from an aluminium alloy uh, it's a fully CNC machined case and it does actually feel uh, really quite high quality. Compatible with quick charge, power delivery and other fast charging protocols. And it also, you can power it with a DC supply. But it looks like to power it from DC supply you still need to use a USB-C type connector. They've got a few notes uh, about the display. So uh, it's got a 0.91 inch OLED which can display quite a few things on there at the same time. As well as the actual temperature of the heating element. We'll see how close that is to uh, the real temperature with the temperature calibrator. Uh, and then a few things about the user interface, so temperature adjustment, voltage settings. We'll have a look at the user interface again in a moment. And then some final things about the parameters. So it's designed for up to 65 watts into one of these cartridges. And you can set the temperature from 0 to 480 degrees. But I'm not sure if you can get 65 watts into a C245 cartridge with a DC supply of only 20 volts. So we'll have to find that out. Um, and it kind of contradicts itself in a few places. Um, it kind of said somewhere here, DC mode is required and the machine can only be started when the voltage is greater than 20 volts. But further down the list, in several places, it says the power supply shall not exceed 20 volts. So I don't think I'm going to feed DC into it. I'm just going to use a um, USB-C power supply that supports power delivery. So to test out its capabilities, we're going to be using some PCBs that we've had made at our sponsor for this video, JLC PCB. So JLC PCB, who I'm sure you're all familiar with for their ultra low cost PCBs, just $2 for five PCBs plus shipping, they've now added some new options to their website. And if you click on the advanced PCB section here, then you get those unlocked. And you can have now multi-layer PCBs from six layers all the way up to 20 layers for your very complex PCBs. Uh, they've also added some additional material types if your application demands that and also some new via covering. So epoxy filled and capped, as well as copper paste filled and capped, which can be really useful for thermal conductivity or additional current carrying capability. There's a few other options here, uh, but don't forget to visit JLC PCB if you're thinking about getting some high precision PCBs made. Now, before we get onto the solder testing, let's have a look at the soldering handpiece itself. So the unit's very similar in length to the other USB-C soldering irons that we've looked at in the past. It's made entirely from aluminium, from one machined piece of aluminium, so it feels very sturdy. That's then been sandblasted and then anodized. In this case, in black, but as you saw, you can get a silver version as well. On this end, you've just got a USB C connector and nothing else. It looks like the whole PCB assembly was slid in from this side, and there appears to be a bit of aluminium here, possibly part of the heat sinking or something like that. Um, at this end there's not much to see, just what appears to be a PTFE ring here to support the cartridge because when you slide it in, if you have a look, the, car um, the contacts are at the end here uh, but there wouldn't normally be anything to support it just here. So if we slide it in, you can see that ring grips it quite tightly and stops it moving around. Now in terms of the grip, it's got this nice soft grip that allows you to uh, hold it quite comfortably. And in terms of the tip to grip distance, it's very similar to an actual JBC soldier knife, as you can see. If we hold them in about the right place, uh, it's pretty much the same situation. So not bad in terms of the ergonomics naturally using it for soldering iron. It's also quite well balanced. It feels quite comfortable in the hand. So we'll take a look at the user interface in a moment, but uh, it's just got three tactile switches that are quite clicky here. And as I mentioned before, that's 0.91 inch LCD. So I'm just going to find my USB-C power supply and plug it in and we'll see what we can do with the user interface. So we haven't got any instructions for this, so we're going to have to try and work out how it works just from playing around. And you power it up there and it says Geek Tools, so they must be the manufacturer for this item. And it looks like we just press a key to start it heating. And yeah, there we go, it climbs up. Climbed up to 260 there in about five or six seconds, so possibly slightly slower than a genuine JVC. 
all we can see is we've got the room temperature 29 degrees C. Now it's not 29 in the room, but the unit's a little bit warm just from me holding it for the past few minutes. We've got the DC input voltage, 20 volts. So this has been uh, powered from a power delivery power supply. So 20 volts is the maximum anyway into this unit. And it looks like we've got a set point temperature of 260 degrees C with this being the actual temperature of the tip. We've got a power meter showing how much power is going into the cartridge. And then a line at the top here that says CH on. Uh, now I wonder if that's to do with um, the presets because I've often seen on uh, Chinese soldier knives they call it channel 1, channel 2, channel 3 or something like that to um, refer to the various presets rather than preset 1, preset 2. So uh, it looks like that's what that is. If you press left then it goes to a zero set point. Press right and it does 260, 320, 380, 420 and 480. So are those just our set point temperatures? I'm not sure. What's the middle button do? Okay, so that CH off. And um, we're able to go up in 10 degree steps now. Yeah, so the CH off must be our presets. And when it's off, it means it just goes up in a set increment. In this case, pressing the button, it goes up in 10 degree C increments. Yeah. So let's see if there's a user menu. Probably hold down the middle button or something like that. Yeah. So we've got the main menu, temperature setting. So if we press OK on that. Uh, oh, OK. It's got the step size. 10, so let's change that to 5. I prefer 5 degree step size. Uh, sleep. Now, I think this has got an accelerometer in it, so we can set the amount of time before it goes into sleep. At the moment, that's set to probably 200 seconds. Uh, and then it's got the default settings there. Maximum is 480. Now, we're never going to use it at 480. We may as well protect the tips. 430 is about as high as it needs to go. Then we've got time setting. Uh, the first one says sleep. And it's set to 1, so I'm not sure what that means. Is that seconds or minutes? Not 100% clear. And stop 3. So this must be minutes. And maybe it uh, literally turns off after 3 minutes. Might have to test that. Then we've got um, the set points. Yeah, so channel 2, 320, okay. Channel 4. So we've got four presets there, as we saw, and we scrolled through those before when we were actually changing the temperature. Then we've got other settings, so tip set. Um, tip set 1, that's not particularly intuitive. Maybe these are specific settings for calibrating each tip, I'm not sure on that one. Uh, decoy voltage... 20 volts. So uh, I wonder if that's the actual voltage that it's requesting from the power delivery uh, power supply. Guard voltage, this is probably the under voltage lockout type voltage, so 6 volts. Brightness, uh, we've got the brightness of the OLED. Uh, display, 1 or 2. Uh, we'll have a look at that. Maybe um, that's changed the layout of the display on the heating screen. On state, is stop so that's the thing that i was talking about you have to press a button in order to uh, start the cartridge heating up and then we've got a factory reset then we've got tip adjust and tip number so yeah it looks like it looks like it's got a um several calibrations that you can store in it so for example at the moment we're set to tip number one we could store a calibration for a 2.4 millimeter chisel, for example, and do all the calibration setup. And then if we change it for another cartridge, we can store the next cartridge as tip number two. And then when you switch between the two, you'll always make sure that the tip is calibrated properly. So it looks like we've got um, a six point calibration rather than just what we often see, an adjustment in a certain number of degrees C. We can actually do a five point calibration here. Now in the display settings we set this number to 1 and it looks like what that does is it flips the display the other way around so that if you use your soldier and iron the other way around uh, you can read it. Unfortunately when it flips the display across we actually cut off a few pixels on the right hand side and we've got a few extra ones here so they've added the offset slightly wrong but when we go back to that setting 
and change that back to zero, it should be flipped around the correct way. And as you can see, it doesn't chop off the first few pixels of those letters there. So a slight bug there in the firmware, the whole display is shifted to one side slightly. Right, so we're set to 330 degrees C. So let's see what the calibration is like here. And I did recently change this thermocouple, by the way. A few people mentioned it in a recent video. Uh, but it looks like we're about 15 degrees C out. Let's change the temperature a bit higher. 380 now. And now we're about 20 degrees out. Let's change it to 400 and... Well, we've got it set to 410. Let's see what that is. And what's that? About 25 degrees out. So the calibration is a bit off. Let's see if we can work out how to adjust that. Um, so we'll go through to the user interface. Tip adjust. Um, we'll go to the 300 one. And it's got a number here, 340. So I wonder if that's the ADC value it's expecting or whether that's the amount of power it uh, expects to deliver into the tip. Let's change the 300 one up to 350 and see if that th makes things better or worse. Right, so we've set it to 300. And that is a little bit better. Only slightly, though. There we go. So I think we've got it pretty much spot on. It's a little bit clunky to do because basically you have to adjust the whole curve, uh, which is quite nice in that it gives you a lot of control over the calibration. But it does take quite a long time to set up. You have to fiddle around and keep going back to the main uh, screen and then go back into the user interface to change the set points. But basically, if the temperature is a little bit low, you need to increase the number. Uh, and in this case, I had to tweak the temperature at 300, 400 and 500 degrees C quite a lot to get the curve just right. But that seems to be set up quite well now. So we can do some soldering. So we've got a genuine JBC cartridge here. Let's have a look at what its impedance is. It looks like 2.8 ohms. Um, so in terms of uh, power delivery, that means we could deliver 142 watts into that cartridge. So we can definitely deliver 65 watts using our 20 volt power supply. Uh, so this should give us pretty decent performance actually. Let's try it out. So I was just about to start soldering. I put a genuine JBC cartridge in here, but when you start heating it up, it just resets the soldering iron. It looks like it's triggering an overcurrent limit. Now, I've got another JBC cartridge here. Uh, we'll just check if it's the same on all of them. But it'd be a bit of a shame if we can't use the genuine uh, JBC cartridges because that's the whole idea of a nice soldering iron like this. And no, it does not work. Uh, let's just quickly measure what the impedance of the Chinese supplied um, C245 cartridges and the Chinese one is about 7 ohms so over twice the resistance so of course the current through this one is going to be significantly less um, so that's a bit of a shame now in the user interface there was the option there uh, I think to tell it to pick a different voltage from the power delivery power supply so we might just try that and see if there's a way that we can deliver less current into the cartridge so I think this decoy voltage is what we can use to change the voltage setting. Let's have a look. And I've been through and changed a whole load of settings, but it still keeps setting the DC voltage to 20 volts. So it doesn't look like there's a way to tell it to only pick 12 volts from the power delivery power supply, for example, which probably would have allowed it to run with the JBC cartridges. So that is a bit of a disappointment. And... Uh, we will do a quick test with the knife tip, but I find these really difficult to use, so the soldering results probably aren't going to be very good.
So after a bit of fiddling around, I have actually managed to get it to pick 12 volts from the power adapter. Not sure why it wasn't working before. I didn't do anything differently, but now it's chosen 12 volts. So let's try one of the genuine JBC cartridges once again and see if that has made any difference. So JBC one in here, let's power it up. And there we go, but it's extremely slow at this supply voltage. All right, so it has got there, but it's very slow to heat this cartridge up now that we've set this to 12 volts. So that probably means that uh, the coin test isn't going to be very favourable, even with a genuine JBC cartridge. So let's try it out anyway. So as you saw, performance with a genuine JBC cartridge is a little bit better than the Chinese cartridge, but we're not able to use those JBC cartridges to their full potential. Basically, at 12 volts, we're delivering 50 watts into the cartridge. That was what I measured. Uh, the percentage here went to 99% for the whole time, but the temperature dropped to about 280 degrees. Uh, we didn't stay at the 360 degrees, so it dropped quite a lot. Uh, we could have put more power in and um, this test would have been a lot better. But unfortunately, uh, the next voltage up on here is 15 volts, and at 15 volts, it keeps cutting out, so we can't run it at a higher power. What would be really nice is if this was able to enter some kind of constant power mode and just limit at 65 watts, uh, that would have been quite a nice solution. But unfortunately, we don't have the capabilities to do that, even though you could probably PWM the cartridge uh, to imitate a maximum of 65 watts into the cartridge. The benefit of this system is we are able to move away from the Chinese cartridges and use the freely available JBC cartridges in all of their different geometries. So this could work quite nicely for someone. Um, you know, you, JBC have probably got about 50 different styles of cartridges that would work in this soldier iron. We just can't run them at their absolute maximum power. But as a result, it does mean it's quite a flexible system and probably better um, in that respect than the other USB powered soldering irons but uh, yeah just a shame we can't use it at its maximum power you probably could do if you use the dc input and for dc input all you do is get a usb-c cable and um, disconnect the communications lines and run the two power lines from a dc power supply and then you could tweak it up and down to get the maximum 65 watts but uh, a little bit fiddly there I will put a link to this item in the description down below if you're interested in taking a look at it. I think it's quite a decent price point, um, so it could be interesting to some of you. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Big thank you to my sponsor for this video, JLC PCB, and also a big thank you to my Patreon supporters who really keep the channel going. And until next time, thanks for watching.